Hello, I'm David. Hi, I'm Julie. Now we're going to do a review on how to play a roll to the top, a roll and write game where players will race to complete their architectural structure, filling it in with numbers. Now this is for one to six players. It takes about 20 minutes to play and it's for ages eight and up. First, we'll do our overview and how to play and then we'll give our rating and our reasons for our rating and then we'll compare it to these roll and writes behind us. But first, the overview. Each player will be given the same board and for this journey, they recommend that you either start with the Eiffel Tower or the Pyramids. You can eventually then add in these boards for variety. So there's six different journeys you can go on. You'll see there's an action die here, which will determine from turn to turn what dice can be added, I mean subtracted, added, swap, uh, swapped right here, or added or subtracted. Before though you begin the game, the active player rolls all five dice and any dice that come up as even will be used in the first round. So only two dice are going to be used. Now if all of them came up odd, you just re-roll until you get at least one even die. So now as the active player, I will roll these two dice plus the action die. And I will give the action, pass the action die to the player on my left. Since it's a two-player game, we're going to be passing it back and forth. So here we go. A five and a seven were rolled. Julie's going to add a die after we're done using these numbers. Now you don't have to use the numbers, but it is a race game. If we put the, you can add them. I can put a five, a seven, or I can put a 12 down here, or I can just use the five. The problem is if I use the five, that means the, the brick above will have to be a five or higher. And there's only a four sided die, an eight sided, a six sided, a 12 sided, and a 20 sided, but you can add them. I will use the five. I'm not using anything. Joe's not going to use anything, and that's her, her choice. Now, what die do you want to add in? Um, the blue one. Okay, so she's going to roll the 20-sided. Now she passes this to me, so I'm going to have to subtract out a die at the end of this round. All right, so we got a two twos. Now, you could add these and make it a 20 or an 18 or make it a 4. Uh, I will use the 2 and the 2. And just to show you why this is a mistake, if I put the 16 here, I have to have those two bricks on the bottom complete first. For instance, if I had it like that, you can't do that. You have to have the brick below it. And I don't have to use that 16, but I, I'm, I just want to show you <laughs> why it's a mistake to start out with big numbers right away. So I have to subtract out a die. I'm going to take out the 6 because I need that 20 sided since I'm, I have a 16 there. And I got, well, I can't even use the 17 above the 16. Well, actually, I could. I could put the 3 here. Okay. And then I could put the 17 here. But now, look what's going to have to happen. I'm going to have to have 17s or 18s or 19s or 20s. <laughs> and that's, you know, with, and this could be, this die could be subtracted out or added in. I would probably lose the game if I started out with a 16 down, down below. And Julie's doing the right thing, starting out with low numbers. But again, I just wanted to show you how it, how it goes. Now, if it ever comes in a situation where there's only one die left, the next player would have to add in a die. If there's all five dice being used in that round, the, the player to the left would have to subtract out a die. So again, you keep on going until the structure is filled in. If both players fill in the structures, they share the victory. Now there are, are rules for solo play. And the way that works is for every die that you roll minus one, the AI board or the robot board, you fill in an X. So what you're doing is you're comparing how quickly you can fill in yours to how many X, how many spaces don't have an X on the other board. And so that's right there you can see that if you were to get complete your board so fast <laughs> and have 13 open positions on the robot board, you would score the highest. So let's go over our rating now. Okay. Where are we at here? <laughs> oh, here it is. So we both said six. Yep. We'll play if in the mood. And you'll find out why when we compare it to the other roll and writes. Let's see our rating here. So for me, it's easy to, to learn, teach, and play. We'll want to write number sequencing race game. And it, there is some player interaction because you could be looking at the player to see, like me, Julie would probably want to subtract out the 20-sided die a lot just to slow me down. 
if I had done something like this. So there's some player interaction there. You can look at what people need and not use that die. So if Julie's going for a lot of low numbers, I'd probably remove the four-sided <laughs> die. Uh, there are some math connections, and this is total class suitable, meaning that this is a perfect game to put on a document camera, make photocopies of this, give it to everybody in the classroom, and you roll the di you roll the dice on the document camera, and you and you have the whole class play. Now, in the expansion, there's opportunities to subtract numbers from dice, but you could even do that. You could even make it a situation where you allow students to multiply the dice, uh, to add and subtract, or even divide. So that's one way you can add more math to it. So this will be a game I will recommend for total class uh, usage with a document camera. Now, this, the theme is shallow. Yeah, okay, why are you putting numbers on a structure? Because that's what it, because <clears throat> they just slapped on a theme. It's neutral because it's still fun. But, you know, maybe if they would have made the dice look like bricks or things like that, I, I don't know how you could have done that. You could have made it more thematic, maybe. But it's kind of hard to do that with, with a, a number roll and write game. And it's limited gameplay fun. It is what it is. You're rolling dice, and you're just making sequences, trying to get to, to use them the most efficient way. Mm -hmm. There's not much going on here, and that's why it's a six. You need to be in the mood to play something so simple. But from a teacher perspective, you would use this in a classroom, or if you wanted to introduce roll and rice to people, uh, or for young players who are not ready for more complicated games like you're going to see behind us, you start with this. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to say, Julie? Not much. Mm -hmm. Pretty much what you said. Uh, I thought it was easy to play and learn. Um, the, I like that the, there's different paths for this. The dice are pretty. I agree with David, there's little player interaction, but it is decent playing time with two people. So I'm okay with it. Right, and there's some more variety here. Mm -hmm. And it can mess with you. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look now at how we compare it to other rule and write games. Okay. Let's start with one of the first ones that we got. Now this is the German cover. This is, that's pretty clever. That's and so clever. That's very clever? I think so. Yeah, that's very yeah, very clever. And this is a more complicated version, but it's more satisfying. Mm -hmm. So we play, we can see ourselves playing this more than the other one, don't you agree? Mm -hmm. But it's easier to, it's harder to teach. It is. To younger people. So just keep that in mind that it does require more effort to play. So this is why you would start with Roll to the Top. Yeah. Now, w Welcome To was this Actually, I think this was the first one, and this was the second one. Other than Yahtzee, of course. We grew up yeah, with Yahtzee. Yeah, we grew up with Yahtzee. Welcome To has more of a theme. Yeah. This is straight up math. This has no theme. No. Okay? At least Roll to the Top has more theme. This has more theme than both of those games where you're trying to f uh, fill in your, neighborhoods. your neighborhoods in the most efficient way, trying to sell the houses. Mm -hmm. with, and you're doing patterns and set collection. And you have cards in this in this one right here. So this is a solid game, and we have a lot of the expansions where you, where you use the same cards, but you have different boards, different themes. So this is more thematic, uh, but it requires a little bit more effort to get to the table. Whereas with this right here, both of these are really easier to get to the table. This you can use with total class as well. You could play this with a whole classroom. This would be hard to do, mm -hmm. this one. Now the last one, this is the most thematic, but has the least amount of player interaction. In fact, this one has a little bit more player interaction because you can deny people dice. True. Uh, this one, I don't think there's much player interaction mm -hmm. at all. No. So this one doesn't have much either. And this is where you are trying to... I like that one. Grow your farm, move up, uh, sell things in the market, move up in technology, you know, improvements, I should say, for your farm. And it's, th but this is a lot more difficult to play than all of them. Yes. So out of all four, this is the one that you play when you know that the people you're playing with can handle. That's agreed. That's pretty. Is it pretty clever? Or very clever. Very clever, I think. And they I can, don't know. I forgot. That's what happens when it's in German. <laughs> and welcome to, if they can handle these three, then they're ready for three sisters. True. So we keep them all in our collection. This one is more thinky. Yep. 
That's thinky if, too, though. Yeah. I don't know. If we don't want to think that much, roll to the top. I guess that's what we're going to say. Yep. say. And the other ones, we'd have to decide which ones we're in the mood for mm -hmm. on how we feel. Agreed. This takes more time, though. That one takes the most time. Yes, I agree. I agree. So there's just some options for you. Yeah. So roll to the top if you're a classroom teacher and you haven't played with much roll and write games, start with this one. Otherwise, if uh, you have other roll, uh, other roll and writes that you prefer to play, like the ones we showed you, you probably don't need this in your collection. Mm -mm. So thanks for watching. Thanks so much, you guys. We'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.